Kia ora and welcome to video 23 in the series Agile Algebra. Uh, this video is going to be presented by former student Xander Pritchard. Uh, Xander was a wonderful young man um, and still is, of course. He's down at Otago University and he talks a little bit about his degree uh, in his solution. Uh, a very clever young man, he achieved scholarship in calculus uh, whilst with us at our school uh, and was involved in a whole heap of other uh, different things at school. Um, his explanation is wonderful. Um, he goes into quite a lot of depth uh, around the decision making and solving uh, the problems, the trig identities that are being used. And here's the question uh, that Xander will be taking you through. It's quite a tricky problem. I must say I did it in a completely different way to uh, Xander's solution, but we've got a simultaneous equation there that involves some trig expressions. Um, and like always, give the problem a crack uh, before you go through the solution. Enjoy the YouTube video uh, that he's put together. He's put a lot of time into it clearly, and hopefully you find it useful. All the best. Hello, guys. I am Xander. I was a student uh, for Mr. Walden's Calculus Scholarship class uh, in the years 2019 through 2021. Uh, I had a lot of fun, had a great time. Um, yeah, very enjoyable, very enjoyable. I'm here helping out today as a favor to walk you guys through this uh, calculus scholarship uh, calculus scholarship question. I, I'm i not doing math anymore. I'm a, I'm a second year at Otago Uni doing medical laboratory science, but that's besides the point. I still am a big, big fan of maths. This stuff is very fun and hopefully you guys will We'll find this find this question find this question easy enough. My um my strategy for questions like these is always to always to use Desmos as a great tool because it helps visualize all the equations through graphs and that's that's excellent. That's always loved. So uh, let's give this one a shot where we have to find four distinct solutions to the system of equations with two equations. Hopefully you guys have already given this one a shot. Um, but let's see. Let's see how I did it. So, first of all, my first step is always to uh, give a little label to both of the equations. We've got equation one and we've got equation two, just so we understand what we're referencing. Um, especially easy when you're doing Mr. Warden's assignments. Uh, very, very convenient to have to have things labeled. Um, let's give this first one a shot, though. We've got we've got three sine two x minus two sine two y equals zero. So luckily we've got a lot of um, trigonometry rules uh, in your formula booklet for calculus, which is very convenient. That stuff's awesome. I still have my um, formula book from the 2019 exam on my desk with me right now. It's, it's such a great, such a great little tool to have. Um, one of the equations is sine of 2a equals 2 sine a cos a. This one's very useful because as we can see with this first equation, we've got double angles which are typically quite ugly. So let's get rid of them. Let's turn it into 6 sine x cos x minus 4 sine y cos y equals 0. That's a whole lot better. This is lovely. This is this is a good start. Let's do a, little, let's do a little quick little rearrange. Let's take let's take the y's over to the right hand side and divide through by 2. So I've got I've got it nice and well well condensed. And then, and then the next step I took here was to square to square both sides of the equation, the left hand side and the right hand side. So we've got we've got a nine on the left, we've got a four on the right, and we've got everything else squared, which is going to be useful uh, for this for this particular equation. Where we've got cos squared a equals one minus sine squared a. So if we sign that in, if we sub that in, sorry, to the cos there and the cos there, then we'll be able to turn this into an equation uh, with x's on the left, with y's on the right. And it only has sine squared, which is going to be lovely. Um, until until we expand it, that is. So we've got the one minus sine squared x there, and the one minus sine squared y there, um, just in brackets to help us understand it. So that when we um, expand expand the brackets, we got a nine sine squared x minus nine sine to the four x equals four sine squared y uh, minus four to minus four sine to the four y. Now that is lovely. Let's go on to the next question, the the, the next equation now, um, where we have two uh, cos squareds. 
in the equation, cos squared x and cos squared y. Um, let's again use the same thing so we get it into the sine squared form that I've seen over here previously. Uh, this the same the same formula, which is lovely. It's a very useful one. Um, let's sub it in there to the sine squares into the cos. So we got the one minus sine squared there and the one minus sine squared there, just as a cheeky replacing. Uh, and then we can then we can multiply it through. Um, obviously, we've got a three, a two, and a four, which is easy to shuffle around. Um, so we, we we can rearrange this equation to get two sine squared y equals one minus three sine squared x, which is which is lovely. Um, you love to see it. Uh, I'm going to do two things with this equation, and you'll, you'll see why later. Um, first thing I'm going to do is multiply it by two. Uh, so, it's, so I can get 4 sine squared y equals 2 minus 6 sine squared x, literally just multiplying the whole left-hand side and right-hand side through by 2. Another thing is squaring the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So I get 4 sine to the 4y equals 1 minus 3 to the sine squared x, all squared. And the reason I've done this... Oh, psych, I expanded it, just that, just that we can see it a bit easier. Um, this is going to be lovely. It's all going to come together. The reason I've done this is because with this equation here on the left, I've got a 4 sine squared y and a 4 to the sine to the 4y, which we've got here, and we've also got here, which is lovely. Now we can now we're going to be able to do some substituting and combine our equations. Um, so if we bring this one down, we've got 9 sine squared squared and 9 sine to the 4. Uh, this is now going to be equal to um, 2 minus 6 sine squared x and uh, 1 minus 6 sine squared x plus 9 sine to the 4x, which is lovely. We've got that all in one. I know I've only got sine squareds and sine to the 4s. It's all of x, so it's lovely. We've all got like terms. This is brilliant. This is absolutely, we're going in the right direction now. Um, This sign, this sign stuff me up for a bit. I thought I got it wrong. Remember your signs, very important. It's honestly, it'll cost you in your exam. It's just the simple mistakes, simple errors. Make sure you got your sign the right way around. So let's multiply through that through by negative, negative one inside the brackets. And then we can see here that we've got on the right hand side we've got a minus six sine squared x and a plus six sine squared x. So these are going to cancel out and be zero. We've also got a minus 9 sine to the 4x and a minus 9 to the sine to the 4x on the left hand side and the right hand side. So if we add 9 sine to the 4x on both sides, we'll end up with 0. That's lovely. Those will also cancel out, simplify down nicely. Then we've got a 2 and a 1. 2 minus 1 obviously being 1. Um, beautiful. That means the whole thing just cancels down to a 9 sine to the squared x equals 1. Incredible. Look at that. Beautiful. Simplify that just a little bit. Divide both sides by 9 and take the square root of both sides and we've got sine x equals plus or minus a third. Incredible. This is this we're making progress here. Let's take that this equation from before, this equation here where we've got a sine squared x and we've got a sine squared x there, so we're going to sub that into this equation. Um, we've got 2 sine squared y equals 1 minus 3 times a ninth, which is lovely. Um, we've then got, simplify that down a bit, 2 sine squared y equals 2 thirds. Um, divide both sides by 2, we've got sine squared y equals a third. To get squared of both sides, we've got sine y equals plus or minus root 3 over 3. Incredible, incredible scenes. Let's take next slide. I'm um, going to be dealing with these two now, trying to find out um, four distinct solutions for x and y. Um, we have our general solution here, where if sine a equals sine theta, then a equals n pi plus negative 1 to the power of n theta. Um, this is incredible. We're going to use this. Uh, we'll change the plus or minus the third and the plus or minus uh, root 3 over 3. Chuck an arc sine and a sine on it, just because that does absolutely nothing to the actual number, but this is going to put it in the form of sine a equals sine theta. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Um, now in the form of the general solution, where we've got x and y, 
uh, we've got n, pl n pi plus negative 1 to the n times our, um, our thing getting signed here, which is arc sine plus or minus a third and arc sine plus or minus root 3 over 3. Now, there's a cheeky little rule here. Um, I can't quite remember what this is called when a function can do this, but arc sine of plus or minus a is the same as plus or minus arc sine, arc sine of a. Um, it is, uh, if you draw the equation on Desmos, then you, then you can see that it's symmetrical over the axis, so you can tell that they are exactly the same. It doesn't matter if the plus or minus is on the inside or the outside. This isn't a thing for all things, but having arc sine have this property is pretty useful because that way we can take the plus or minus out of these brackets and put it on the outside um, because then we're just left with a simple arc sine function. Um, which is way easier than having to do arc sine of two different numbers. We've just got arc sine of third and arc sine of root three over three. Um, and having plus or minus there um, means that with this negative one to the power of n, uh, it's slightly irrelevant which n you have because we, we have two options. We've got the plus positive arc sine a third and the negative arc sine a third. Um, so for whatever value n we're going to have either plus or minus arc sine of a third, or minus and plus arc sine of a third. So this uh, negative 1 to the n is slightly irrelevant, um, which means that we can simplify down even further to x equals n pi plus or minus arc sine of a third, and y equals m pi plus or minus arc sine of root 3 over 3. This is very easy. Now we can just substitute in so we've got pi, which is a fixed number. We've got arc sine of third, which is a fixed number. Arc sine of root three over three, which is a fixed number. We can just substitute in n, um, any value for n. It should give us some solutions, provided they're the same. One other thing to note is that because we uh, found y and x together, we found sine x and sine y together. If we're going to use plus on this side, that we should use plus on that side. You cannot mix and match, um, which is fine just fine we can use any value for n so i'll just do go with an n equals zero and n equals one if you do n equals zero then we got x equals zero plus or minus arc sine third y equals zero plus or minus arc sine root three over three so we got x equals arc sine third y equals arc sine root three over three x equals negative arc sine third y equals negative arc sine root three over three uh, then if we sub in n equals one we've got x equals pi plus arc sine a third and y equals pi plus arc sine root 3 over 3. And finally, we've got x equals pi minus arc sine a third and y equals pi minus arc sine root 3 over 3. And they are four distinct solutions to the system of equations. That is the uh, question solved. That is, that is, that is an, a valid answer. And we can check these answers are correct again by using Desmos. It's my favorite tool. We can see the four values there, 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 and there. Um, which is beautiful, the red and the blue being the, the, the equations one and two. Um, obviously, as you can see, there are infinite solutions. This will go on for infinity in any direction. Um, this is just subbing in n equals zero and n equals one. Um, if you were to mismatch the positive and the negative sign, we would have these uh, crosses flipped over the axis, and they would be on the two opposite ends of the this oval type shape. Um, which obviously is not valid, it doesn't intersect the red line, which is uh, evidence as to why we need to keep the positive and the negative signs the same. But besides that, we have an infinite number of solutions. Um, over here, just for, for the sake of understanding, the difference between two identical points is pi in both directions, and that is because we can add or subtract pi to arc sine of third and arc sine of root 3 over 3 for infinity, no matter what value of n you sub in. It could be 2 pi, it could be 3 pi, but it'll keep on going on by pi as we go along through the infinite number of solutions that there are. But these are four distinct solutions. Um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys found the, the question all right. Um, and best of luck for your year ahead. Thank you very much.